Kia ora whanau, Grant McBorn here with another language lesson for you in Te Reo Māori. The purpose of this is to help you build your confidence, build your ability to speak and build your ability to help teach others in your whanau so that we can revitalise the language that is Te Reo Māori. Today we're going to be looking at personal pronouns. Now this is one of the trickier topics for a new language learner. So if you can cast your memory back to school and if you can remember what personal pronouns are, they are those words like he, we, she, I, you, him, her, they, us. They're really those words that help to define a collective of people um, and it splits them up by gender, splits them up by number of people, all those sorts of things. Um, so where it becomes confusing is in Te Reo Māori relative to English, there are quite a few more personal pronouns. And that can be confusing, not only just to learn what the specific words are, but how to use them correctly in a sentence and in a sentence that makes grammatical sense. Okay, and that, that, that sounds right and is right. Um, when I first started learning, I found this to be one of the, the trickier things to learn um, because it, it was such a, a small part of, of learning. It was it is relatively small yet there are lots of words in there that you do have to learn and then trying to get them in the right order and say them correctly. I just, I found it to be one of the more confusing parts of Te Reo Māori. Um, but once I did actually learn them and once it was really reinforced in my head what they were and what they meant, I realised it was quite simple. And the reason being was that it, it actually helps to define sentences uh, with more... Uh, accuracy about what you're talking. You can be more definitive about the topics that you're speaking about. So today we're going to run through that. Uh, I'll run through a screencast, we'll do an overview of what they are, then we'll run through some examples uh, using them in real life. So let's jump across to the screencast and get started. All right, here we go. So now we're back on the main screen here. You'll see I've got a couple of tables up. Uh, we're going to go through this very slowly. So Try not to get freaked out by it and try not to get too far ahead of yourself by trying to read all through it. Um, I'll go through it and I'll explain it. Uh, I'll also make sure these tables are available down in the, the comments section and you'll be able to copy them and use them as you, as you need or as you please. So for the moment, forget about this bottom table down here. We're not going to look at that yet. We're going to first focus on this top table. Now, this is where we need to start uh, looking at the, the grammar structure of things. Uh, and it can get a little bit confusing. Uh, some people don't, some English speakers, speakers don't quite understand the grammar of English, let alone knowing it of another language. So take your time with it. Um, it does get easier the more you learn it. Uh, I can guarantee you that. You've just got to stick with it. So let's get started. You see here we've got <clears throat> we've got four main columns: first person inclusive, first person exclusive, second person, and third person. And then on the the left here we've got three rows: singular, dual, and plural. So just as a, a preface to this, I guess all of these relate to who we're actually speaking to. So first person inclusive is all about uh, talking in the first person and I guess inclusive of that person that we're speaking to. First person exclusive, we're talking about, uh, we're talking the first person, but we're excluding that person from our conversation. So I could be talking to my sister about uh, my family and I'm saying, you know, we are going to, we are going on a holiday. That would be first person exclusive. So I'm talking about me and my family, but I'm excluding my sister from the conversation. Now, that's not definitely not in like a negative sense or anything like that. It's just from a grammatical perspective, how we can differentiate between the two. So first, we'll look at singular. So first person inclusive, that's blank. Uh, now, the reason is first person inclusive, if we're including the person that we're speaking to and we're speaking in first person, then we're kind of talking to ourselves. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, depends who you ask. So that one's blank. The next one, first person exclusive. So we're talking first person, but we're excluding the person we're talking to, and that's simply talking about me or I. 
I am Grant, called Grant Aho. Uh, and the Maori word there is Aho. That one's pretty straightforward. Second person is Koe, K-O-E, Koe, Koe. And that's uh, basically the English equivalent of you. So, hey te pehia, koe, how are you? Okay, and it's, it's one of those things where you, you would say koe to the other person, and then when they respond talking about themselves, they would say aho. So, koe and aho, they sort of uh, go with one another when you're talking about these simple things like how are you or what are you doing? Uh, what are you doing? I am going to the shop. Uh, we're talking about kwe, and then the person responds with aho. Next one on the list there, we've got third person, which is ia, I-A, and that basically means he or she. Now, there's no real differentiation here between uh, what's male and what's female. Uh, how we understand that is building it through the context. So if we're talking about someone that's a male, we'll still say ia, uh, and we'll know that we're talking about that person because the, the context in the conversation is already built. So try not to get too hung up on that. I know some people, when they get started, they can get a bit funny with it. So next, now that we're done with the, the singular words, we're going to go down to the dual. So dual means we're talking about two people, okay? So uh, versus, say, plural down here where we're talking about more than two people. So this is one of those ways in Te Māori where we can uh, further break down the the number of people that we're talking about in a pronoun. Like I could be talking to my sister, and I could say, uh, you know, we are going on a holiday. You and I are going on a holiday. We are going on a holiday. I could be talking to a group of fifty people and still say we are going on a holiday. There's nothing there grammatically that separates the two, other than that context of what we're saying. Okay. So in this instance, in Te Reo Māori, we can split that up. And that's how we're going to do that with our, our dual personal pronouns and our plural, uh, plural personal pronouns. Bit of a tongue twister. Tongue twister. So first on the list there, we've got tāua. So tāua is we, uh, meaning you and I. So I'm going to keep using my sister as an example here. If I'm talking to my sister and I say we're going to go somewhere, uh, I would use tāua because I'm speaking in first person and I'm including her as part of that personal pronoun. We, we, you and I, me and my sister, we are going. Tāua. So next, we can look at ex first person exclusive, which means I'm still talking about me, but I'm talking about two people excluding my sister. So I'm saying I'm talking about my son and I. So say my sister rings up, uh, calls me up on the phone, and she might say, uh, korua, how are you two? Which is going to be in the next one. We would respond with, or I might respond with, te pai maua. We are good. So I'm talking about we, my son and I, talking to my sister, and I'm going to exclude her from that part of the conversation. Next, as I just mentioned there before, korua. So that's uh, talking about you two, so in second person. So my sister, she would refer to my son and I as korua because she's talking about two people, uh, neither being her, and she's talking about my son and I, korua. Now, this is uh, a bit similar to when I was saying with uh, kwe and aho, uh, when you say, you say kwe and you respond with aho, or the person responds with aho, kei te pehia kwe. Kate pai aho, they would say back. In this sense, kate uh, pehia korua, and the response would be kate pai mawa. So that's how the two sort of go hand in hand there. And then the third one, we're talking about uh, two other people. So two people in the third person, and that word is rawa. Rawa. And you can see I've got down here uh, who they are in English. So they two and not us. So I'm talking to my sister here again, and I'm talking about my two sons, say that are at school. She might say to me, Kate te here, Rawa. How are they? How are those two people that aren't in this conversation? Now my response is, Kate te pai Rawa. It's still Rawa because 
we're both talking about two people that are way, way over there. They're, they're not part of our conversation here. So next we're going to go down to uh, the plural sense. So plural first person inclusive. Uh, so we're saying everyone. So if I'm, say, addressing a crowd and I use tato, me hoire tato, all of us, we're all going to go. Me hoire tato. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one, first person exclusive. So say I'm talking about uh, me and my kids and their cousins and my brothers and my uh, uncles and I'm talking to my sister again. And there's all these people here behind me, they're all on my side. Uh, I would refer to all of us as mato. So she might say, uh, koto, which is uh, in the next one there. And I would respond, pai mato. So all of us, we're all good. And I'm not talking about you, sis. You're not part of this group that I'm, collective group that I'm talking about. Next one there, second person, koto, so which I just mentioned. Uh, again, it's one of those things where koto and mato, they, they sort of reciprocal with each other. You uh, uh, ask with koto and then you usually respond with mato. So she would say, koto. So how are all you guys? How, how are you and your kids and brothers and everyone else? Yep, pai mato. We are good. So koto, mato. And then the third person there is rato. So... Uh, again, we're talking about a group of people that are way, way over there. They're not part of our conversation. So, uh, so we still use rato there um, to, to talk about that group of people. And we both, I, I ask with it, and then the other person responds with it. So that's a, that's a quick summary of that table. Um, I remember reading this table for the first time, and it just went, straight over my head. So hopefully that gives you a bit more or a bit better understanding of how to use it. Uh, down the bottom here, I'll copy these out too. I'll just move that up a bit. Uh, I'll copy these out, like I said at the start, so uh, you can start to understand these a bit better. But I basically just started a conversation here with one person starting on this side and then the other person responding on that side. So, and, I'm, and it runs through all of these different personal pronouns. So, kei te pē hia koe, how are you? Kei te pai aho, so koe goes out, aho comes back from the other person. Kei te pē hia ia, how is he or how is she? Kei te pai ia, so different to the, the first one there. Uh, we're talking about someone that's way over there, someone not part of our conversation. So, ia comes, goes out and ia comes back, if that makes sense. Uh, me haere tāua, so the two of us, and I've just written there, we'd be talking about koe and aho in this sense. Me haere tāua, let's go, that means the response, I, me haere tāua. So tāua goes out, tāua comes back. Still talking about you and I. Uh, the next one there, kai te pēhia kōrua, how are you two? Kai te pai māua, we are good. So out goes kōrua. Māua comes back. Kei te pēhia rāua, how are those two? Those two way, way over there. Kei te pai rāua. Rāua goes out, rāua comes back. Me haere tato. Uh, inclusive of that is, is ahau, koe, ia, 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 all these people. Could be three, could be five, could be a thousand. Uh, me haere tato. Let's go. Everybody, let's all go. Response, I. Me haere tato. Everyone, let's go. Yes, let's all go. Tato goes out. Tato comes back. Kai te aha koto. What are you all doing? Uh, talking about uh, all those people that are with, with the person that I'm speaking to. So, like I was saying before, my sister talking to me and my kids and everyone else. She's asking, kai te pēhia koto. Or kai te aha koto, what are you all doing? Uh, and my response is, kai te kōrero mato. We're all talking. All of us here, we're all talking. You're on the other end of the phone, sis, but we're all here, we're all talking. So in this sense, koto goes out, mato comes back. Uh, and then the last one there, kai te aha rato. What are they doing? 
those people way over there again, all those kids at school, kei te aha rātou, uh, well, they're talking, kei te kōrero rātou. So rātou goes out, rātou comes back. So that's a quick summary. Uh, we've got the table up the top there, then I've been through some examples. And next we'll probably look at some uh, videos of these uh, different conversations in action, okay? Kia ora e hoa, kai hea koe. Kia ora bro, kai te whare a tama, ne koe. Kai te kaenga, kai te aha korua i tēnei rā. Ka haere māo ki te toa, ne koe. Ah, me haere tai tātou, ne? Ah, me haere tai tātou, haere mai e hoa. Kia ora e hoa, me haere tāua ki te whutuporo i tēnei rā, ne? Ah, kao, aroha mai e hoa, ah, ka tai mai o kutua ka nā kua nei, ka haere mate ki te hoko maha. Ah, kei te pai e hoa, kei te pēhe rāua. Hmm, kei te pai rāua, kei te hoki mai rāua i te marae. Ka pai. Kia pai tō koutou hairinga ki te hoko maha. Kia ora. E hoa, me haere mai koe ki te kai i tēnei pō. Ka kai tahi tātou, ne? Kā rau e hoa, ka haere ki te kai. Kia ora, 